Hi everyone, it's Dr. Dan here. Welcome to another Voice Essential Specialist Session and I'm really excited today because I've got, well, I'm going to call her a new friend. Her name is Freya Casey and she's got another YouTube channel here on YouTube and, uh, and look, I think you're going to really love her and I'm really looking forward to introducing her to you and we're going to have a bit of a chat. So why don't you stick around? We'll come back in a few seconds and, uh, and we'll, I'll introduce you to Freya. Stay tuned. Sound check. Check one, check two. Hey, Freya, nice to see you. Hi, Dan. I'm so excited that we're actually doing this today. It's awesome. Yeah, after um, probably it's been six, six weeks, eight weeks of planning, hey, to get together. Yes, and yes but you know, the time difference isn't that easy. No, no well, it is. At, at, what's the time here? It's about 20 past 10 on a Wednesday night. And um, and you're you're in the middle. Of, you're I'm in Australia, Brisbane, Australia, and you're in uh, whereabouts in Germany? Are you? I'm in southern Germany in the Stuttgart area, and it's uh, about twenty past two in the afternoon. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, that's that's a wonderful thing about technology. Hey, these days, it just um, there's so much we can do with it. But look, we want to take the opportunity today. We've been, we're going to be doing a bit, of, a bit of collaboration together over the next, you know, uh, few weeks. And um, so we really wanted to take the opportunity today to do sort of a really in-depth chat. And, and, and uh, I only ever invite people onto these specialist sessions who I feel really confident in that they can deliver something of expertise. And, and I, I just haven't got to know you over the last few weeks. I just know that that's going to be the case. So. Um, what I want to kick off with, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, where you, how you got into this thing called singing and teaching and, and all of those things. Well, it must have started in my mother's womb already because both of my parents were prof professional musicians. My mother was actually a classical guitarist and she played in the opera theater and she taught at the conservatory so even as a little child she took me there many times and I was totally fascinated when I sat with her down there where the orchestra is in the orchestra pit and I would see those beautiful opera singers on stage I was totally fascinated I always watched the Barber of Seville like Rossini and that it was it was so beautiful so I went home and I pretended I was an opera singer and I sang out and but you know I wasn't really serious about singing or anything I just thought it was a beautiful world and uh, later on when I was a teenager or well, as a kid I started piano which I guess a lot of young kids do that um, but I was more into playing my own songs already composing writing lyrics and uh, so I would accompany my parents whenever they had shows. My dad was the singer in the family. And so I, that's why I was always kind of shy about singing out loud. I would sing kind of neutral, you know what I mean? Just blend in and it's fine like in a choir. But I would never let anybody hear the other side of my singing, which was like I could do all this. I could do vibrato and all this stuff. And I was totally embarrassed. I would not let anybody hear that. So, but later I studied the flute and I was, I wanted to really get into that professionally. But uh, I decided to not do it because it was all just about technique. And I was like, nah, it's not so much my thing. I'm more a hard person. So later it was more of a coincidence. I, um, with my um, then, back then husband, I went to the States. He was American. Uh, that's why my English is like it is. And I got a job at a university there. And I had a background in um, office work and I was a travel agent for many years. That's why I actually have a, I'm, I'm a trained travel agent actually. And uh, I got into the university where he was studying my ex, uh, my now ex-husband, and um, I chose music because I always knew I wanted to do music. But the piano, first of all, mm, I was more of a freestyler, and the flute, 
it was like it had been years and my embouchure wasn't that great anymore. So I said, I can sing, I could always sing and I love to sing, so why don't I just sing? And I had never had a voice lesson before. And it turned out I could really do it. So what I did, I studied opera and uh, went to Southern Methodist University, got a full, a full scholarship there and graduated magna cum laude and all that stuff. But later I decided I always sang everything. I wasn't only singing opera and that's where I was always different. I was always doing my own songs and doing pop and doing jazz. I loved it. I couldn't just say I'm never gonna do that. So I got into everything and at one point decided I didn't want to be in theater because the way opera theater is here in Europe you have to do so much stuff that didn't resonate with me. It just didn't. I suffered. I like running around on stage with a negligee on and half naked and then just, you know, putting blood on yourself. It just wasn't my thing. I'm into beautiful things. So that's why I quit and I'm so glad I did. So after being on cruise ships for many years, going to Antarctica and South Pacific and everywhere, I, um, I decided I wanted a family. So <laughs> I have a little daughter. And so I'm not traveling that much anymore. That's why I actually started YouTube. That's one of the reasons. And uh, I actually started YouTube because my students wanted me to do that. They wanted to have a way to practice when they're not here, or when they're moving away. So I started YouTube and it turned into something that's like, I'm helping people. And that's the most awesome thing to be able to help people all over the world. So. That's kind of my story in a nutshell. Yeah, okay, the, 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 the exciting story in a nutshell. Tell us, how did you get into the singing teaching thing? When did you start to teach? I actually started teaching when I was uh, at the university, at Southern Methodist University in the States, in Dallas, uh, because part of the studies there, that's part of your degree, you, uh, you actually have to also take vocal pedagogy and do a practicum and have some students that you teach and then show how you teach. So that was kind of the beginning of me teaching and then at the same time I started at a music school in Dallas and uh, started teaching students there and I really loved it and I actually still have a student um, I'm still in contact with her and her family and she was one of the first ones who took lessons with me and she's now a pretty well-known artist like Tejano she does this she's you know Texan but Spanish uh, Mexican heritage and uh, she's doing all these gigs and she's doing albums and they always you know her parents always write me over Facebook and they're like oh look what your student is doing and they're so they're still so happy that she took lessons with me and I'm happy that I you know that I could be helpful in her way on her way on her journey there and not hinder that I guess I could contribute to her finding her own voice and not hinder that. So that's, that's really great. You know, the, the, the journey of a student is, um, well, everyone's journey has a different length to it. It's, you know, how long's a piece of string. I wonder whether we can just talk about what, what do you do with a student when they first walk into your studio? What's, what's the very first thing that you want to target as a teacher? Now, the first thing I want to target is that um, I will try to connect with them and, and make sure that they will try to trust me. I think that's a really important thing to establish a trust because it's a very personal thing. Your voice is extremely personal and um, so that's the first thing I try to let them know that I want to have fun with them. It's not, you know, I'm strict but I'm not strict in a way that, you know, I'm going to be mad if they can't do it or something. I'm strict that, like, you can do it. I'm going to be strict for your own sake because you can. I'm not going to take no for an answer and I'm not going to let it slip through because you can. 
so having that trust to where you can actually dare to try out all kinds of crazy stuff which in voice lessons you sometimes have to do stuff that sounds a little crazy um, that's one important thing and the fun factor I think you should always have fun and have the feeling that you can just express well I have a feeling this isn't working for me or what do you think you know having this communication and this trust that you can tell each other anything you know that feeling when you look at the student and you have a feeling like they're doubting what you're saying but they're not saying it you're not sure yes yeah it's and it, and it is an important thing isn't it trust between the student and the teacher um, and and you got into the YouTube thing because I and we we had a conversation uh, in a previous Skype session we had when we were planning all of this, when you talked about the idea that you got into doing Skype because you wanted to be able to, you know, continue to um, give your students who were no longer in the country or whatever off touring what have you, you still wanted to have that sense of connection with them. That that uh, that that speaks to me that you you love this thing called singing teaching what is it about it that you that you love so much well the thing that I love the most is um, that I can see the progress and that's that's what motivates me the most every day you know when I start my day in teaching is that I'm I'm so looking forward to working and not just to like oh, okay I gotta do my lessons today and just get it over with but I'm just so excited what's gonna happen today and there's sometimes there are frustrations happening of course but sometimes there are great things happening you come up with this exercise on spur of the moment sometimes you just have to improvise and just like okay let's see what's gonna work now and it works and then it's such a great feeling when both teacher and student have this moment of like oh, yes I know how it feels like now I totally got it and then it may not work again next time <laughs> because you forgot it but just you know having more and more moments where you have these aha moments of like I got something and you know how yeah how hard it is to explain voice yes those penny drop moments are priceless aren't they yeah yeah they're so special when you when you see a student and sometimes that, that, you know, when you see that student who's been working so hard, you know, you've been working together and it may be over an extended period of time and then suddenly the penny drops and it just happens. And that, they're, they're very exciting moments in the studio. Yes. And, like, and, and, and those are usually moments where, you know, a whole, like one little thing happens, but it opens up this whole new world of singing. I mean, like today with a student, I had this moment where we talked about opening a vowel and her A eh was too narrow. So we, I was trying to come up with a way like her A ah was just fine, but whenever she was doing A, eh, it was too narrow. So we alternated between A ah and A eh, and we did this exercise where we just hold one pitch and go like, and try to have the same resonating space and then like at first she couldn't do it and then it it just it happened and she's like oh I just realized that it's such a little difference it's just a tiny lift of the palette there and then she got it and then the whole song went so much better because she wasn't narrow and she always had the feeling before like I feel like I'm pressing and it it fell all into place the whole song that's cool yeah that's that's awesome I wonder whether we can just I'm, I'm watching the time and we don't want to go too long I wonder whether we can just direct the conversation back to a little bit more about you who, who are your top three vocal influences I know you'll have more than three but give me the first three that spring to mind who who inspires you vocally well you know I, I would have to first of all go back to my classical time of course and someone who inspired me with her voice and the beauty of her voice you may probably not know her it's classical uh, world is Barbara Bonnie I always loved her a lot then another singer who she has this really nice bright and this really bright clean voice I love that and um, also Anna Sophie von Otter <laughs> now this is a funny name but what she also does she is a classical singer but she also does jazz and um, one other singer that always inspired me 
because her story is so amazing is Renee Fleming. You may know her. She's quite famous in the classical area. But Renee Fleming was like, she auditioned at Met, at the Met several times and they never would take her. And then she, she went there, well, that's the story I heard, and then she went there and did something totally off the charts. Like, it wasn't even her fach. It was like, to, just to show people like, okay, whatever, I don't even care anymore. And then they took her. And it was like, that's, that's why I like singers who have stories that aren't so straight. And it's not all about being perfect. It's about being different and being special and having your own edge to it. And that's, um, I, like, I like even like Ed Sheeran's story um, that he, he actually um, started out not being that great. And I always thought like he's, he's an awesome singer technically too. I mean like he has this really wonderful control and he's a great instrumentalist. But I just found out that in the beginning he wasn't that great and he just moved out from home and he, you know, he started playing on the streets. And since he did it for years and just did nothing but play and sing, he got so good and that's, you know, Stories like that always tell me it's like, okay, the one ingredient in being a great singer is that you actually have the prerequisites, but you know, everybody has some kind of voice. But then the, the, the other big huge ingredient is practice, 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 doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and doing it even more. You gotta breathe it, you gotta live it, you gotta bathe in it. <laughs> that, that's so important and I think you can only be an artist and as a matter of fact I think you can only be a great voice teacher if you can't do anything else. It's like I have got to do it because that makes me happy. It's just what makes me the most happy. Like if I had to do anything else, I wouldn't be as happy. I, I wonder, there was something you said just a few moments ago and it and triggered me. I, I did want to ask you this because I know you're very passionate about this particular subject. And the subject is, you know, finding your own unique voice, you know, and, and being your own unique singer. I wonder whether you can unpack that for us a little um, uh, in, in as brief amount of time as you can because I know you're passionate about it and we can probably st sit here for the next hour and, and talk about it but tell us a little bit about you know your thoughts about um, being that unique singer be and, and owning your own unique sound well the first thing that I think is so important about you know having the feeling that you're singing in your own voice is now first of all of course you want to sound natural and I don't know what it is I was always into singers that didn't sound artificial even in opera theater as a kid I never liked those opera singers that had this huge wide vibrato it, I didn't think it was pretty and to this day I love singers that have a voice that sounds close to a natural speaking voice like no matter what color you have like if you come into my studio or like I just see you, you know, start talking to you anywhere, I hear the way you talk and even when someone speaks to you, it's not very nice when somebody speaks like this and it's, you, you know it's fake, it's not natural. And I think in singing it's the same way. Um, to sound natural, you have to sing in your own voice. And that's why I think it's so important to find your own voice um, because first of all you're gonna hurt your voice if you're not doing it in your own natural way because it's not gonna be you like if you have to kind of um, move around your larynx too much or move too much space or have tension in your jaw because you're trying to get this huge sound that's not actually you you're gonna hurt yourself you're not gonna be happy you're always gonna feel like and I know a lot of singers have this struggle about even professional singers always struggling about um, I always don't know what my voice is doing right now and they always have these issues and I don't know I was lucky maybe I, and I had a really awesome teacher I have to say that I mean she fit me per perfectly that she helped me really discover my singing voice with which I never had issues I mean there's always stuff I could work on but I didn't have huge issues to where I had to say oh this is like this is just not working 
I always felt my voice is working. And that, I think, this can only happen when you really truly find your own voice color. Where's my natural voice color? And where's my kind of my comfort zone, which I'm also big on getting out of your comfort zone as far as expression goes. You know, you may have this personality of very shy and then you will most likely also sing in a very shy way. So then I'm very big on, okay, that's you now, but you can expand your horizons a little bit and still in your voice, just dare a little bit more and go a little farther in what you do great already, but just do more of it. Just go a little further. So that's... <laughs> and I think you've just recently done a video, haven't you, on t seven risks that every singer should take or so it was titled something <laughs> like that. And, yes. uh, and that was great. Yeah. So uh, people should head over to your YouTube channel and have a watch of that because I, I, I watched it, I got a lot out of it and uh, I thought it was fantastic. You. Stepping outside Thank of your comfort you. zone, it's fabulous. We, we've got to uh, finish up, but before we do, what I want to do is I want to I fire off three questions. They're the same three questions to everyone who does, uh, comes on to the specialist sessions. And, and everyone needs to know these, these questions are sight unseen. Freya doesn't know what the questions are going to be. <laughs> so here we go. They're not that bad, Freya, I promise. So okay. what was your worst ever performance experience? I can tell you a story that wasn't, it wasn't about me being terrible. It was just about a disaster when I got there. It's like I was supposed to sing at a wedding and uh, the organist was supposed to accompany me. Only he didn't know. <laughs> so, and I didn't have any sheet music for him. And it was some miscommunication between all the parties. I mean, he was supposed to know that and I was told he knows and then I'm showing up and he knows nothing about it. Not only that, but he also didn't know he was supposed to play a solo piece that he also didn't know. He thought I was going to sing it. So major, dis you know, crazy, no, no communication. So what we did, we just kind of scribbled down notes and, and it just swung it. And I had to sing one thing a cappella, but that was like the worst thing that's happening it's like when you get there and you're actually well prepared and then there's one component that just it, it it's all obsolete what whatever you've done it's just not working right now and that's I have to tell you I actually have dreams about that my my worst dream is and I have that sometimes it's because it's the worst thing that can happen I'm showing up somewhere and I'm backstage and I'm supposed to do a show and I don't even know what song and I don't know the music I have no idea have you ever dreamed that? that? That type of singer, as am I, that, that needs to be fully prepared, like you've got to have really been, so it's obviously a nightmare to you to, to not be. Is that the case? No, actually no. Like, I like to like, know what I'm doing, and that's why I'm only accompanying myself. I'm not doing that anymore. But I have to admit, to my shame, I'm a little bit of a procrastinator, just because of the fact, just because of the fact I can. It's terrible. I know. I, I am working on that. I can. I'm lucky. It's like, I can learn music so fast. I can just get the sheet music printed out, and in an hour I'll be performing it. But, um, yes, but it's, on the other hand, it's terrible because I tend to procrastinate, and because I'm like, I'm still prepared. Like tomorrow I have the gig. I'm totally prepared if I print this out today. If not, I'll do it in the morning. But it's terrible. I know I could be so much better if I actually did this ahead of time. <laughs> so I'm a procrastinator, but I do it quick. We all have those things that we're working on. And talking of working on, the second question is, what is your favorite vocal exercise? Either that you, that you do yourself or that you like to give to your students. One, only one. Yes, also one of my favorites is um, if you can't find your chest voice, and that's a lot of women have that issue um, that have sung in choirs and that only sang in head voice, have a really hard time finding the chest voice and finding what we're talking about, your own natural voice, and finding their own natural voice. So what I will do, and that is based on speech level singing a little bit, is um, talk in slow motion, and then just kind of do it a little bit more sustained way. Like I will tell them, say, today is a beautiful day. 
and then do the same a little bit more sustained today is a beautiful day and then we will slow it down and then we'll actually do pitches today is a beautiful day so that has been working so well for all of my students to really find their chest voice and not be all tense but just be relaxed about it awesome well thank you very much that's that's an excellent exercise and i'm sure people will get something out of that and they can play around with that we've got one more question and it's pretty easy because i know that you'll be able to fire off an answer to this really you know with 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 great aplomb and ease what is your top piece of advice for any singer that um, might be watching and and uh, and have spent the last half an hour with us what would you say to them if they were stepping into your studio what's your number one piece of advice for every singer yeah to uh, my we already talked about that of course um, even when you're with a vocal coach you should always feel comfortable and have the feeling that it's your voice that you're not bending it that you're not sounding not like yourself um, which that's a whole other subject we're not going to talk get into that now but um, sometimes your picture of yourself of how you think you should sound is different than what the world perceives of you of course and then sometimes you would have to work on that but basically for me it's always about staying connected to your own voice and you know having fun with it and having the feeling that yeah this is me this is really I'm free and I can just sing and without tension and the end goal is always ease perfection would be total ease in your voice and um, whenever it hurts anything hurts that's like warning warning so always have the feeling that it goes easy which doesn't mean it's not work singing is work for your body but it shouldn't you shouldn't feel your vocal cords are extremely tense or anything like that so that's my advice stay in yourself and not putting something putting strain on your vocal cords or your voice that's that doesn't need to be there that's that's fabulous advice as I expected it would be and uh, I want to say thank you very much for spending the last half an hour chatting with us here on the specialist sessions and um, uh, why don't you just quickly tell us where we can find you I'll put some links in the comments sections below but in the notes sections below but just tell us very quickly where we can find you and people can you know look look you up and uh, and and take advantage of all the stuff that you're putting out there on YouTube etc yes definitely so I would definitely love to connect with everybody um, of course here on YouTube uh, which I'm sure you will link it up um, in the notes below Freya Casey is my channel name and then also I have um, a website, a blog actually, where I put out singing tips. Um, that's friassingingtips.com, friass-singing-tips.com. And um, then of course, all the social media like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, I got some nice boards there that are all pertaining to singing, that I'm collecting lots of stuff from the internet all over that I'm researching that I'm reading so it's like all approved by me what I've pinned there you can also find me under Freya Casey and then of course I do uh, Monday through Friday I do live periscopes um, on which I usually sing a song and then I talk about some singing related issues so also Freya Casey there awesome you are you are one of the most connected individuals that I know <laughs> On, I know, on, so online, you're, you're, you're just doing an awesome job. So, look, I just want to say thank you very much again. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I know that um, it, people will have gotten so much um, out of the session. Well, there you go, everyone. Freya Casey, she is fabulous. And uh, it's just been so good to have her on and, uh, and the specialist sessions. And, of course, I want to really encourage you. Go over, head over to her channel. Don't just head over there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and because uh, I know that she's going to be giving you good stuff and you can really trust um, that what she's communicating to you is well worth it you know it's hard to find stuff online here that you can trust but let me say Freya is one person and uh, that you can really take the information 
that she's giving you to the bank. So once again, thanks for joining us here on the specialist uh, sessions. Thanks, Freya, and uh, we will catch you all uh, in the next Voice uh, Essentials specialist session. I forgot what I was going to say there for a second. Uh, until I see you all again in the next video, I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.